What up, what up? Will and JT here with the Baseball Bat Bros. And today is the first annual Bat Bro Award Show. Think the Grammys, perhaps the Oscars, the Academy Awards, but way more important. What are we going to call it? The Broskies? Broskies. <laughs> no, that's what's doing. But for real, today we are going over the best BB Core bats of 2020 and 2021, the best brands, our least favorite bat, the most overrated bats, the most underrated bats, the sexiest looking BB Cores. Oh, yeah. Let's get right into it. So to start it off, maybe the most important category we probably, got today. Probably. The top 10 BB Core bats of the 2020 year. Let's get it. So first off, I want to talk about, we have uh, three honorable mentions. Mm -hmm. Three bats that didn't actually crack the top 10, but kind of deserve to. They're, they're really, really close, right on the edge. First up. Yeah. Oh. Is that out? Oh, damn. This thing's got Yeah, juice. dude, I, I agree. We got the Rawlings 5150 BB Core. This is the 2021 version. The Rawlings 5150 was like a really, really solid, slept on, underrated BB Core. That's honestly really cheap. I think you can get the 2020 for like 170 bucks, if not even less right now. Really good sweet spot, great power, not too overpowering as far as swing weight goes. And really for a one piece, this is kind of all you can ask for. Good for giving sweet spot, smokes the ball, and made it all the way to the final four of one piece BB Core Bat Madness. Cam just had a god oddly round with this thing where we, we did a whole YouTube video on just cam hitting with the 5150 uh -huh. really really solid bat I think it was the best Rollins BB core of this year now for the next honorable mention we got that was high oh my god jeez uh -huh. the 2021 Louisville Slugger meta BB core the meta so this bat kind of got dampened down a tiny bit from its 2020 version because it got banned, right? Mm -hmm. But I think people are sleeping on the fact that this is still really one of the best contact hitting BB cores. Towards the end, it's pretty dang soft, honestly, because it's a pretty balanced bat. But if you get it towards the hands, this thing is really forgiving and has some pretty good thump. Uh, an awesome sound. Honestly, one of the easiest bats to hit with. You can get beat so bad towards the hands and still smoke the ball pretty good with this thing. While it's not the blue 2020 meta, it's still better than I would say most two-piece composites out there right now especially if you're a contact hitter and then our last honorable mention before we get into the top 10 oh first man first pack first pack into wow. the tree Woo! Oh my! The fan favorite, the Warstick Bone Saber BB Core. I know a lot of you guys might be a little pressed that this didn't get into the top 10. Cam, I'm sorry, bro. I know you wanted this to be like number one. Uh, but the Bone Saber is a really solid bat. Just couldn't quite crack that top 10. The Cat 9 got in the way. So the Bone Saber is like a nice, easy to swing bat. That knob is really the game changer, guys. It makes it a lot easier to swing than how like than what the swing weight really would like measure in at. Incredible power for how easy it is to control. The sweet spot's just kind of small. That's really the only thing to complain about. But this thing can hit it hard, bro. We're hitting exit velos clear into the hundreds with this yeah. thing. Trace hit a few balls at 400 feet. Uh, this bat can smash for like a really precise hitter. It's not the weapon, it's the warrior. I play Battlefront and the weapon matters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, JT. Number 10. That was 400 feet, bro. The 2021 Marucci Cat 9 BB Core. So to start off our top 10, we got the Cat 9. Really solid bat. I think people underestimate how much of like a power hitting bat this is. Definitely a slight end load. The sweet spot's further out towards the end, and it can hit bombs, man. Oh, yeah. Really good forgiving barrel, big sweet spot, almost like too forgiving. If you get rung up on the hands, you don't even feel it, mm -hmm. which some people like, but some people don't really like because you can't even tell if you hit the ball far or not. You'll have like a lot of warning track shots oh, yeah. that you thought you hit out of the yard, but I mean, nonetheless, this is an excellent bat. We had some of our highest exit velos ever with this thing, clear up into the hundreds, really big sweet spot, not overly heavy, but still definitely pretty end loaded. Awesome bat fell short to the victus vandal but made a really really good challenging elite eight run in one piece bb core bat madness the cat nine can't go wrong with this really solid bat now coming in at number nine. Oh baby oh no Four that person's in the car oh, oh that almost hit a car oh Somebody my gosh hit. we got the 2020 victus vandal boom 
So this was a sleeper in One Piece BB Core Bat Madness, made it all the way to the final four and actually knocked off the Cat Nine, which mm -hmm. enraged viewers of the Bat Bros. <laughs> but guys, this is honestly a really good bat. It has almost the same sweet spot as the Cat Nine. A lot of you guys don't realize this is really just a variation of the Cat Eight. It is a Cat Eight build, even like the handle and the knob and grip and everything. It just has a composite end cap. So it's basically a really light swinging Cat Eight. So you're gonna have a giant sweet spot and a light swing weight, but because it's so balanced, you're not going to have quite the thump that you're going to have on the Cat 9, but still retains a good amount of power for how light swinging it is. A really, really easy bat to hit with, forgiving. Honestly, more contact hitters should be using this thing instead of like a two-piece composite. This is also going to be a lot more durable than your composite bats. Really, really good underrated bat in 2020, I think. All right, now we got number eight. I will say, numbers three through eight were literally almost all tied. Yeah. <laughs> it was an great. absolute gauntlet. Mm -hmm. I think we have a pretty clear number two and number one, but three through eight was an absolute mm -hmm. crapshoot. This could have gone any way, uh, but I think we nailed it here, and I think number eight... Oh! Oh, oh my Yo! God! Oh, my God! Oh, that one went really cool. Needs to be the Cat9 Connect. Mm -hmm. I know it's number eight, but guys, there's like 40 to 50 BB Core bats. Yeah. So this is in like the top percentile. Very, very excellent two-piece hybrid power hitting BB Core right here. The Cat9 Connect. You're not going to find many bigger sweet spots in the BB Core game. Super, super forgiving barrel. Can absolutely hammer the ball. It's pretty heavy though. This did fall short to the goods when we did a two-piece hybrid uh, Bat Madness rematch, but it's still an excellent bat. Honestly, one of our favorites of the year. Number eight is a really, really high spot. For a power hitter, you are going to absolutely love this thing. Oh, yeah. And a bonus, we actually haven't heard any durability issues with this where we have heard a lot of du mm -hmm. durability issues with bats like the goods and select power. So, All right, next up, number Number seven on our top 10 BB Core Bats of the Year. Oh, oh man! No. Nice. 400! Oh! We got the, the goods, goods, baby. A lot of you guys are going to be a little bit curious about why this is so low. I mean, again, number seven is very, very high, but I think durability is probably what kept this thing down on the list a little bit more. Honestly, like JT, I think this is probably one of your favorite bats to oh, hit yeah. with, if not your favorite bat to hit with. Mm -hmm. um, this absolutely smashes the ball. This beat the Cat9 Connect in a one-on-one -on -one matchup kind of easily. Uh, the sweet spot is absolutely massive. It can hit the ball very hard and very far. A power hitter's dream. It's nice and stiff. Super forgiving barrel. I'm just getting so much fan feedback about how these are breaking at the connector piece mm -hmm. a lot. So that's the only thing you got to look out for. But I mean, honestly, this is one of the funnest BB cores to hit with. It absolutely mashes, bro. You see this mm -hmm. thing all over college baseball and all over high school baseball. And nobody can keep this thing in stock for a good reason. It's a very good bat. But you might end up spending a lot of money um, if you keep going through these bats. Yeah. And coming in at number six. Oh, buddy! Woo! Oh, Lord! We got the 2021 Meta Power. Ooh. All right, so the Meta Power actually impressed me quite a bit this year, whereas the Meta took a step back. The Meta Power step back really wasn't as noticeable. Uh, still a very, very impressive bat. While the power isn't quite there with like the goods or the select power or some end loaded alloys, the sweet spot is stupid. I don't think there is a bigger sweet spot in BB Core. I've said it a bunch. The sound is amazing. The feel is incredible. The sweet spot towards the hands even feels like a freaking contact hitting two-piece composite. Mm -hmm. And it has that good performance towards the end because it's a good end loaded bat. Pretty heavy to swing, but because the sweet spot's so dang big, you can get beat, jammed on inside pitches and still hit the ball out of the yard. That's really what put this bat over some more end loaded composites like the Dirty South Filthy, for example. And even though this is 500 bucks, if you get this thing, you will love it. I can mm -hmm. pretty much guarantee you that. This is a very, very solid bat. Very deserving of a six hole, if not higher. I just hate how dang expensive it is. Yeah. And it did fall in exit velo testing when we put it against the select power. All right, coming in at number five. We got the 2021 Easton Maxim Ultra. All right, so the new guy to the scene here, the Easton Maxim Ultra BB Core. The most recent new release that we've swung 
really, really impressed us. I said in the video that this was the most impressive Easton bat that I've swung in quite a while. Huge sweet spot. The exit velos were off the charts, man. Way up there with like the Voodoo 1. Tons of power. Big barrel. Honestly, a lot like the Z1000. A really, really good bat. I think there's a lot more discovering we need to do with this. Break it in even a little bit more. Do some exit velo testing against like the number one and two bats of the year. The swing weight is definitely kind of more on that power hitting side. It's going to be slightly end loaded. So more of kind of a stronger hitter. But this one was fun to hit with, man. The sound is weird and almost like non-existent. Oh, yeah. And the feel is weird and almost like non-existent. But the ball flies off of this bat, bro. Big upgrade from uh, the Maxim from last year, the Maxim 360. This thing is honestly very legit. We haven't hit with it that much, but we did some exit velo testing with the track man when we did test this bat, and it was legit, bro. We were hitting mm -hmm. balls clear into the hundreds. I had some balls very, very far. Killer bat. It's going to do big things this year. All right. Now we got the top four. Big top four here. Uh, three and four, again, had a tough time. Mm -hmm. Again, three through eight had a tough time, but I think this is the right move. I think this just, again, guys, this reflects the bat bro's opinion and not necessarily like hard facts. Like this is all subjective. What we think is the most important thing about a BB core might be different than what you think is most important mm -hmm. about a BB core. But I mean, we like to consider pop, which is most, a lot of people think that's the only thing that matters, but that's definitely not all that matters. That's a very overrated attribute. Uh, sweet spot, barrel forgiveness, performance on mishits, swing weight is huge, swing feel, mm -hmm. handle, grip, taper, and all that. So next up in the four hole. Ooh, come on. We got the Louisville Slugger Select Power BB Core. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I think this bat might actually be a little bit underrated. The goods really overshadowed it, and people, you know, didn't buy this one as much. They had a whole bunch left over for their big annual sale, and a lot of you guys were actually able to get this bat for like 200 bucks. That is a huge comp. Great, great deal. This is an excellent bat. Number four of the year. It's like the goods with a little bit smaller sweet spot, but a little bit lighter swinging. Easier to control. We put this thing up against the meta power. I hit a ball 102 miles an hour. That oh went like God. 390 feet or something like that. This thing smokes the ball. Excellent bat. Legit one of the best of the year. And I think people don't appreciate it enough. I'm actually ready to say I think this is a little bit better for the average hitter than the goods. The goods is pretty heavy. This hits it almost as hard and it's easier to swing. I have heard a few durability issues when it comes to the handle and the end. I haven't seen any for myself. A lot of barrel rattles, but that doesn't really matter that much, honestly. But uh, nonetheless, this is a killer bat. I think people think it's a little bit heavier than it is too because the PWR on it, but it's really, you know, more like a four or five on the swing weight scale. It's not that bad. All right, JT, number three. This was, this was a tough decision. Mm -hmm. um, I think I am even swayed by the price of this by thinking that it shouldn't be as good as it is. <laughs> but... All right, it's pro we're probably good, but I'll well, do one more. I'll do one more. All right, Wait, later, ball. How are you doing well, this? We have the Stinger Nuke, baby, oh, yeah. making the three hole. This is going to piss some people off because how dare we put a one-piece alloy that's only $200 at number three, but we're doing it. This thing is legit, bro. Mm -hmm. The sound is so dead and so weird, but when you actually hit this thing off of live pitching, it is built different, bro. Okay. The performance on miss hits is absolutely stupid. I had one of my best BP rounds of my life with this mm -hmm. thing, and each time I've hit with it, which has been a lot. We have probably 500 plus swings on this bat. Mm. I've liked it more and more and more. You'll see soon Trace absolutely goes off <laughs> in a home run derby with the Stinger Nuke. And it's just really, really impressive. There's not a lot of BB cores that feel like this where it has a little, it swings like a two piece hybrid, honestly. A uh, really, really impressive power. This even edged out the Cat 9 and Exit Velo testing. The, again, the performance on miss hits is absolutely ridiculous. Off balance swings off the handle and off the end, you're spinning balls out of the yard still. It's gonna be really durable and it's super, super affordable. Honestly, one of my favorite bats of the year just because it's so dang cheap and hangs with really any bat out there. Keep in mind, this is gonna be a pretty end loaded bat, ideally for more of a versatile, especially more of a power hitter. So if you're a smaller guy, a contact hitter, don't pick up this thing expecting it's gonna be super easy to swing. But I do think you should see this a lot more for older high school guys and especially college hitters. A lot of you guys should be picking this thing up. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, JT, 
What the people have been waiting for, man. The final two, what you got? Much anticipation for this one, but at number two... Oh, oh my god! god. That, dude, that's on top of the shit. Oh! We have the 2021 Victus Knox. Hell yeah. Guys, no secret, this bat is legit. It's almost impossible to find. It's sold out like everywhere. This is Trace's favorite bat. This is this might be Cam's gamer next year. But a giant sweet spot, super forgiving barrel, really, really solid on miss hits. And the ball just jumps off this bat. Really kind of has it all. It's not too heavy swinging, like a five on the bat bro scale, packs a punch and a good big forgiving barrel. Really can't ask for much more. A power hitter can swing this thing. I feel like a contact hitter can swing this thing. And really a versatile hitter's dream. You're gonna have barrel control, a good forgiving sweet spot and you're going to be able to hit the ball out of the yard we absolutely mashed with this thing really excited to see what it does in the bat madness world series it's definitely one of the top seeds going into it killer bat for a little bit cheaper than a lot of the other two-piece hybrids out there i hope they make a lot more of these because this is an excellent bat and time for number one what we think is overall when you combine all the attributes together the best bb core baseball bat of 2020 and 2021 for most hitters that would be using it. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some really strong guys that might not like this bat. Oh, oh that was good. Holy. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. That's the highest that up I've ever hit it in the tree. But fellas, the Voodoo Ooh. One, super, super light swinging, absolutely hammers the ball somehow as hard as some of the heaviest bats in the game and the sweet spot doesn't suck at all man really good on miss hits super forgiving barrel again a bat that feels like it has a little bit of flex in it almost feels like a two-piece hybrid honestly i feel like this is kind of a clear number one there's not really any bat that is as good in each category as the voodoo one man a good sweet spot incredible power for how light swinging it is and you can control the barrel so well with this thing and for a one piece that honestly doesn't ring you up that bad at all it's a pretty easy bat to swing a guy like trace probably wouldn't want this bat because he can handle heavier bats with a lot of ease but dude like if i was playing high school ball right now even though i'm kind of a stronger hitter i might freaking swing this thing it is <laughs> incredible i don't really ever hit as good as i do with the voodoo one Mm -hmm. Like the, with other bats, they just can't hang, man. Art exit velos with a bat that's like a seven or eight on the swing weight scale, which is super like feather light, is hitting the ball as hard and as fast as bats at like a two or three on the swing weight mm -hmm. scale. This thing is absolutely legit. Everybody that swings it seems to absolutely love it and is sold out literally everywhere, unfortunately. So oh, it's awful. But I mean, if it's the number one BB core bat, it should be sold out because mm -hmm. everyone should be buying it. So, and this is going to be a lot more durable than a lot of bats and cheaper than a lot of bats. So it really just hits every category. This thing is legit. Best bat of the year. So with that said, let's move into some of our kind of more fun categories. Mm -hmm. So moving on, next we got the top five baseball bat brands of 2020. All right, a little competition here. <laughs> So we're actually gonna go one to five with this one. Mm -hmm. So the question is, in like the metal bat world at least, which brands, which companies are putting out the best bats? Mm -hmm. This is really just kind of for bragging rights, right? Yeah. And this is just our opinion. Again, there's no way to really measure this, but I like to think we swing more bats than pretty much anybody out there. Uh -huh. So if anybody's gonna have a good opinion on this, I feel like it's us. So, number one, gotta give it to a man. Oh my God. Dude, it, it's so much better still. That's four. That's four <laughs> ten, dude. Say it, De Marini. De Marini, baby. They have the best bat of the year. The Goods is almost one of the best bats of the year, and the Voodoo One's number one. They just don't have a bad bat in BB Core. Mm -hmm. They have what's pretty widely agreed upon to be the best U Triple SA bat in the CF, and all their bats are just pretty dang good, mm -hmm. man. They have the Voodoo One for contact hitters, the Goods for power hitters, the Goods One Piece for power hitters, uh -huh. that like an even stiffer bat. The CF BB Core is probably mm -hmm. like my least favorite BB Core of theirs, and people still love that bat. It's yeah. a really good contact hitter. It's just bat. so expensive. It's just too expensive. It's and still a great contact hitter. Yeah, but just get the voodoo one that's right like they just don't have a soft spot man i feel like it's hard to like beat them right now because they don't have a bad bat and they kind of are just owning every category mm -hmm. there was one brand that i think rivaled them though and at number two we got kind of a combo mm -hmm. here which you guys might not agree with but they're basically the same company oh yeah. 
Wow. Tennis court. Marucci slash Victus. Another situation where they don't have a bad bat. Mm -hmm. All four of their bats this year in BB Corps are in the top ten. Oh, yeah. Which is like an argument for them maybe to be number one. Mm -hmm. However, Dean Marini just has a lot bigger offering. Yeah, and it's kind of unfair. It's two companies against That's one. That's the thing. So it's like I didn't want to put them at number one because they're technically two companies. But you have the Knox, the Vandal, the Cat9, and the Cat9 Connect, mm -hmm. which are all in the top ten, but the Voodoo one being number one. And the goods beating out the Cat9 Connect had to give Dean Marini number one. Mm. And USSA, they're also really good in the alloy space as well with the Cat9 and the Cat9 Connect. The Cat9 Composite, if that ends up doing really well, that could really get him even closer to number one. I still think the CF's a little bit better, though. Very very close between those two, though. Yeah, a, a well-deserved number two. I think those are the clear one and two. It gets a little more tricky after that, though. Mm. Now, number three, Will, tell them. Oh. Hey! We actually we actually kind of debated here. Uh -huh. We almost said Easton, and I think a lot of you guys would have been upset about that, but we had a good reason for it. However, for number three, we're going to give it to Louisville Slugger. While they have a few bats in the top ten, they don't really have right now like one clear like, oh, this is like the best bat out there in its own category. Mm -hmm. For contact hitting, they have a really good bat. They have the meta. The solo, I don't love that bat, honestly. I feel like it's a little bit overrated. For power hitting, they have two excellent bats, mm -hmm. but still not like the best bats. You know what I'm saying? The select power and the meta power are really, really good bats. And U-Triple-S-A, they have two really solid bats, but not like the best. The yeah. meta is really good. The solo is really solid. So, I mean, I think they have like a good solid number three group of bats there. Mm -hmm. A good wide lineup. Everything's pretty dang solid. I just don't think it's quite enough to knock off uh, Marucci Victus yeah. or Di Marini. Really good brand though. Tons of good bats. I think last year they might have been number one oh, yeah. with the blue metas. Uh -huh. All right, coming in at number four, JT, what you got, man? If this one's out, you like and subscribe. Oh, you got it done. Oh. That's hitting something. Oh no. Oh my god. We got Easton. Easton. A lot of you guys kind of throw shade at Easton. Like a lot of fans don't love him because they really like the Power Brigade stuff mm -hmm. back in like 2012 to 2016 and the Makos and they've actually gone away from all that. But guys, like in USSA, they're killer. In USA, they're so good. The Maxim and the ADV are both killer bats in the drop five and drop 10 worlds and in bb core guys i really think they're doing some things right the maxim ultra is an incredible bat the mm -hmm. maxim 360 was a really good bat that technology that they brought in from combat i think is really helping mm -hmm. them out the adv is solid uh their end loaded one piece alloys are all pretty solid the fuse 360 xl the alpha 360 xl the b5 is decent i think it's a little bit overrated but it's a solid bat a lot of, a lot of college guys are still gonna like that thing i would still probably swing the fuse 360 xl personally but i mean they have a good lineup they kind of cover every category uh they do really well like uh -huh. in the younger player yeah. categories the youth bats are really really solid uh, i think they're a clear clear uh, number four, I don't think there was any competition behind them to get in that spot. Mm -hmm. Number five, though, is where it gets tricky. Oh, yeah. Because those are really the big four. And after that, you have like ten little bat companies. Uh -huh. And this is where it got kind of tough for us to judge. Yeah, really tough because, I mean, there's like, there's two, like two of our favorite bats of the year are companies that have like what I think is like one good bat. Mm -hmm. Like you have Stinger with a nuke. And you have Warstick war stick with the bone saber, with the bone saber, and like the Hawk Two and Gunner. I just don't think those are very good mm -hmm. bats. But I think there was one company that stood out that has like a wide offering with a really like unique kind of spin on things, where they have good U Triple S A bats, three really solid BB Core bats, mm -hmm. and a very unique handle. JT, what you got, man? Yo. We got the Axbat. I think Axbat deserves it, man. All these other companies just have like one good bat. Axbat has a lot of like really solid mm -hmm. bats. Not one of them really blew us away, but I mean that axe handle, there's something to be said for it. And the barrels on those bats are still pretty solid, man. The hybrid was good. The elite one was good. We still haven't swung the Avenge. That's probably like the only yeah. BB core we actually haven't swung yet, but we'll have to try that out. We got to try out their U-Trip stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of people love those bats though. I just don't think there's much competition for that five spot with like a broad offering of bats that are actually really good. Mm -hmm. I think Axbat takes it, man. A well-deserved five spot for Axbat. All right, so there's our top five brands of the year, JT. Uh, let's talk about the most overrated 
in the most underrated BB cores of this year. This is where we're going to kind of get a little edgy, piss some people off, but let's do it! <laughs> All right, so to start out, let's start with the underrated bat. What All you right. got? Underrated bats. I think the most underrated bat of this year Ooh. has always been the 5150. Mm. Like, it's one of the best one pieces. A super similar bat to the Cat 9 honestly with an even like thinner more comfortable grip i think the 5150 is legit bro mm. almost cracked the top 10 and it's cheap and nobody buys it oh yeah like it's, at, it's weird yeah. at the end of every year they like go on super sale because they have a bunch of leftover inventory the 5150 is legit bro to all you guys that play at rolling schools that are swinging the velo and the quattro stop <laughs> the 5150 i think is quite a bit better than both those bats that's a very very solid bb core good sweet spot good power hitting bat so jt what you got for your other most underrated bats man i think the root american mob power the moab power dude i think you're right this made a good elite eight run in one piece bb core bat badness big sweet spot heavy bro oh, yeah. tough to swing but, like, for a guy that likes a power-hitting bat, I would actually be pretty conservative with the size you get. If you're kind of on the verge between a 32 and a 33, get the 32 because this is a pretty heavy swinging bat. The sweet spot's pretty far out towards the end. But if you get it, bro, this thing can bang. Yeah. I had some oh. of my furthest balls with a freaking 32 of this. <laughs> this is a very good bat. Sounds epic. Sounds like a BESR, honestly. And nobody's using it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a really good bat that people need to check out if you're a power hitter. This is one of the best power hitting one pieces in the game. Or just straight up one of the best power hitting mm -hmm. bats out there. It's a really, really killer bat. And then our next most underrated bat of the year, for good reason, nobody knows about this. <laughs> and they really haven't marketed themselves at all, but we discovered them. Okay. Yo! Let's go! It's like kind of good! The freaking team, man. Team, man. <laughs> just the funnest bat. It's just the most random bat out there. Craziest paint job. It's just shiny as hell. It, it, it's trippy. <laughs> it's trippy looking, yeah. But this was actually a really good bat. Nobody uses it because it's, you know, from Korea. Nobody knows about it. So it's just underrated because of that. It's nobody's fault, right? But this bat was actually good. Felt a lot like the Goods One Piece or a little bit like the String King almost. Only $180. You have to buy it on eBay or else it's 200,000 Korean won. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to like blow you away, but it's really reliable. Good solid performing One Piece. Up there with like the Omaha or B5 or String King or the goods one piece honestly it's really good now next up another underrated bat which is actually in our top 10 oh there's one victus vandal baby let's go we're going with the victus vandal yeah well, i think a lot of you guys are gonna be like oh that's not underrated a lot of people love that bat mm -hmm. But I see so many contact hitters, younger high school guys that are swinging like a $450 or $500 bat that I don't, I don't think is as good as the Vandal, man. This is a perfect, ideal contact hitting bat. Light swinging, good sweet spot, and still can thump the ball out of the yard pretty well. And it's going to be a lot more durable than a lot of your two-piece composites. Mm -hmm. I think this just should be used more. I think it's already pretty popular. But I think people get fooled by the extra additional price tag on the two-piece composites. And a lot of these retailers saying composite is the best performing material mm -hmm. where that's just not true it all depends on the bat but the victus vandal is absolutely legit man i think you young bb core hitters this and the voodoo one are the two bats you should be looking at mm -hmm. in my opinion and then lastly a bat that actually gets a lot of press because it's freaking a hundred dollars that's wow. so far gone <laughs> wow Woo. <laughs> the string king baby uh this bat is dirt cheap and you know a lot of people give it recognition for being a good bat and it's cheap but it needs more recognition <laughs> again this is like a good like middle of the road as good as most one pieces out there mm -hmm. again this is as good as like i think the b5 and the omaha and mm -hmm. the goods one piece it's right up there absolutely this is a legit bat the string king metal pro for $100, dude, you can't freaking beat that. Oh, if yeah. you're balling on a budget and your parents don't want to spend a lot of money on a bat, this doesn't suck at all. Get the freaking string Get king. the freaking string king, man. So, JT, there you have it, man. Yep. Our most underrated bats of the year, and I think a lot of people want to see what we think are the most overrated bats of the year. And just, you know, bats that get really over-marketed, oh. over-hyped. People think they're going to be better than they are. They might be overpriced. Let's check it out. Our most overrated bb cores of 2020 
All right, so these are in uh, no particular order, but we have four here. Uh, first off, this is soft. Oh! <laughs> it feels like you just have to fight through contact so much. We're gonna go with the Rawlings Velo, actually. Uh -huh. So that met up with the Voodoo one in the first round of One Piece Beeple Core Bat Madness. And a lot of the fans out there actually had that bat going pretty far. Mm -hmm. Back before we realized the Voodoo one was actually that good of a bat, before we gave it like a good shot, a lot of people were really thinking the Velo was going to make some moves. And it's a really, really popular bat. Like in the last few years, tons of people swing the Velo, mm -hmm. man. And we put it up against the Voodoo one. It wasn't even close. No. It was like one of the biggest blowouts of the tournament, and the Velo just did not feel good at all. To be fair, it might be the single lightest bat mm -hmm. in the BB Court space, but there's like almost no barrel on it. Uh -huh. Like, nothing feels good. The barrel gets bullied so bad, and you have to just swing absolutely out of your shoes to hit mm -hmm. the ball out of the yard. It may be if you swing like a 34, like I can see it, but like a 33 Velo against like a 33 anything else... Just, I did not love that bat, bro. And a lot of people use it, and I just think there's way better bats with that type of swing mm -hmm. weight. Like the Vandal and the Voodoo one, and even like the Solo or really any two-piece mm -hmm. composite, I would rather swing over the Velo. Yeah. Uh, we will give the 2021 a shot, though. I think they made some tweaks, so we'll give that thing a fresh chance. I hope it's good, man. I'm really rooting for Me that too. bat. I used the Velo a little bit back in college, back in like 2012. It was, it was a pretty different bat, actually, and I really didn't mind it. It was really easy to control. But the Velo ACP from last year... I just wasn't a fan, man. Mm -hmm. All right, next up for probably one of the most, if not the most, overrated bats of this year. That was overhyped by a lot of marketing. First swing. Wall ball. Huh. Oh, I, I felt like I got that a little bit better. Oh. Wow. That died. That died. See, I wish it had a little more gas. Yeah, that died. I wish it had a little more. If I would have done that with the finger, it would have been gone, I swear. Right. Yeah. We're going with the Easton B5. I think it's got to be the B5, man. It's a it's like solid bat. I think it's as yeah. good as most one pieces. Uh, the Omaha, the Goods one piece. I think it's right up there, man. But for how much it was marketed and how much people were talking about it, this this got the most buzz I've seen out of a lot of BB Core bats over the last. They made years. a rap song about that. They made a song about it, and the song was kind of cool. I actually sort of liked it. Loki went hard. Yeah, Loki went hard, yeah. But I just like hitting with this bat. It just did not wow me. And I think a lot of stronger hitters might enjoy this bat, but dude, like I felt like you know the freaking T Man and String King were hanging <laughs> in there with it, and it's just like another Omaha, and, uh -huh. and it's good. Like a lot of people like the Omaha. It's a good like middle of the road power hitting BB core. I just wouldn't drop three hundred and fifty bucks mm -hmm. on it, honestly, man. I think the Stinger Nuke blows this thing out of the water. Wasn't really that good on miss hits. If you barreled it up perfectly, it went very far like i'll give you that but i just like this almost lost to the string king and bat madness mm -hmm. uh it got smoked by the nuke um i think this was talked about a little bit too much i think it's a little bit overpriced just for not that forgiving and really heavy of a bat so i mean it's still good it's just again you guys know how expensive it is and how much it's talked about that's how we're like defining overrated right mm -hmm. next up you guys are gonna see this one coming <laughs> ow what i'm like serious that hurt again. <laughs> <laughs> the Rawlings Quattro. Uh, I don't get how people like that bat. We don't. That's a hard, <laughs> like that's harsh, but I've given the damn thing so many chances. We've tried to break it in. I I've put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds mm. of swings on the Quattro. I've put it up against good bats, against what I think are not very good bats. And I just can't find a way to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people swear by it. A lot of really good hitters hit well with the Quattro. And again, like, the good thing about this is that we are not the governing body of baseball bats. Mm -hmm. We are just four guys with an opinion that like to hit a lot. And I would like to think have a somewhat educated guess on these types of matters. Uh -huh. I didn't love the Quattro. It's super expensive. Um, a lot of people hype it up. I don't think it's good. Mm -hmm. Sweet spot's not very good. It it's, rings you up like crazy. Yeah, it's very light, but like it might be towards the lowest pop of any bat of this yeah. year. 
It's got, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I We filmed with Mason and Cam, uh, and I didn't even post the video. It actually became a members-only video just because they hated it so much, man. But the 2021, we'll give it a fresh chance. I hope it's good. I, I just know the Quattro can be good. Mm -hmm. The 2018, the 2017, even like the 2019 were all really good bats. The red and black ones, whew, I didn't like them. I, did, I just didn't like them. Then lastly, for our most overrated BB Core Bats of the Year, this one isn't as overrated as it's overpriced. Yeah. It's kind of a letdown. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like the, the bat that you wanted got banned. Yeah. It has to be a letdown. That's the whole point of this year's thing. Yeah. It's actually this guy, yeah. and I'll tell you why. There's kind of two groups in the meta fan base. You have the 2020 enthusiasts that are pissed off that the 2021 <laughs> isn't as good. And then you have all the people that just hear the word meta a lot and they still think even the 2021 meta is the most goaded bat uh -huh. in the history of the universe. I saw this video of Gary Sheffield hitting with yeah. the meta and someone was like, oh, he's hitting with the meta. He's not even good. Those balls are going far because of the meta. Is it, even the 2020 meta wasn't a good power hitting uh -huh. bat. It was a good contact yeah. hitting bat. It, was just, it had a big sweet spot and it was light. That's pretty much it. The Voodoo one smoked it in Exit Velo. But I would say, if anything, this is just overpriced mm -hmm. and over talked about. Again, it's in our freaking like top 10 almost. Or no, it was an honorable mention. Mm -hmm. But it's a great contact hitting bat. Light swinging, good forgiving sweet spot, excellent towards the hands, super easy to hit with. I don't think it deserves the title of the only bat to be $500 mm -hmm. though. For 500 bucks, that's not gonna it, like, did change it, your batting average stats yeah, or dude, season stats. It, it didn't even drastic. crack our top 10 and it's the most expensive, it's in sole possession of the most expensive BB core bat. And it's not goaded, guys. Stop saying that. It's a pretty good contact hitting bat. It's one of the best contact hitting two-piece composites. But you guys overrate this bat, in my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> All right. The sexy factor. Ooh. The best looking BB cores of this year. That matters. Some people are just trying to swag out at the plate. Uh -huh. They got Evo shields on both elbows. <laughs> They're trying to look good. So our best looking BB cores of the year in no particular order. I think we got to give one spot. So the Warstick Hawk 2. Oh, they yeah. got like five different versions. Sponsored by Mossy Oak. What is Mossy Oak? Oh, you get the fire tail. All right. I know we can't see it because it's camo. So we're just going to have to look a little extra hard. <laughs> oh, shit. Why is it so invisible? It's camo. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh. Rat bastard. We can't freaking find the camo one. I swear we just spent like five <laughs> minutes looking for this. All right, these things look super sick. Uh, the Warstick Hawk 2 bats. I didn't love them just because they were really unforgiving and really dang heavy. Uh, they hit the ball really far, mm -hmm. but they look incredible. The design is off oh, the yeah. chain, man. They got the smoke, the fire tail, the red tail, and the mossy oak. These things are absolutely badass. We're giving one of these away actually in our... Uh, 2020 100k giveaway oh, yeah. all right jt what else you got for the best looking bats of the year man we're going with the t-man the freaking t-man it's oh. a paint job on it okay it you look at this it's just how the how light reflects off of it built different bro look at that <laughs> it, there's no other paint job like this no but dude if you go to the plate on a sunny day with the t-man <laughs> people are gonna be like what the hell is that dude wielding I think <laughs> shit, the sun's gonna be like reflecting off it blinding the pitcher <laughs> like it just looks ridiculous more than anything i love how it looks mm -hmm. so we got to put it on the list guys our sister actually thinks that the goods is oh, the yeah. best looking bat that, and army, I mean, that army green it's sick dude cam's always matching with it cam's always matching with i the don't goods. get how he's always matching with the goods. he always wears army green <laughs> but i think just like the vertical design and the simplicity of the font is really dope. yeah it's one of the only bats with the vertical design yeah that, that it you can't argue with the fact that the goods is one of the best looking bats. It has the cream lettering, the army green barrel, and just that's gnarly. That's like that, that the dang. angel rays on uh, top. And the goods. The goods. The aesthetic. This is the aesthetic bat of 2020. Give them the goods. Give them the goods. Not so good. All right, JT. Then a couple bats that we thought were overrated, but they look absolutely like awesome. To, like, think of putting like hella fine tar up on that thing. This looks so sick. Oh, yeah. Like, Dude, I could maybe be lured to swing the B5 in a few games just because I think it looks so badass. That raw aluminum. Yeah, just the raw aluminum look, and like I would just tar the hell out of the handle. 
I think this looks incredible. I even think it feels like, I, I think it feels nice when I hold it. I want this bat to be incredible. It just didn't really impress me when I was hitting with it, but it looks so sick. And another bat that we also thought was overrated, but looks very, very cool. The Quattro. Oh yeah. The Sith Lord of bats. This is like straight Darth Vader design, dude. Yeah. Look at that thing. <laughs> that I love how that looks. That's the reflective lettering. The barrel looks just massive. Handle looks doesn't dope. necessarily hit like that, but it looks incredible. Yeah, you got the lizard skin. <laughs> yeah, great looking bat. I think it looks so good. And then two more categories. We're gonna have the best sounding BB cores, mm -hmm. and lastly, the BB core that we think sucks no, <laughs> the no. most. Our worst, yeah. the worst <laughs> BB core of 2020 in our opinion. But first. The best sounding BB cores. This was actually kind of tough. Because, like, back in the early BB core days, you had a lot of weird sounding bats. Uh -huh. Like, uh, the Select 716 just sounded, just crack. sounded like ash. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was just an absolute <laughs> crack. Now a lot of the bats sound the same, though. Mm -hmm. Especially the composites and the aluminums. Really mild sounds. Nothing is that crazy. Or super annoying pings. Like the Rawlings and the Marucci bats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rawlings Velo when you're in a batting cage with someone. Forget it. Like just ring your See, eyeballs up. <laughs> ring your eyeballs up. <laughs> See your eardrums. I think there's two though. The bonk of the Meta Power, dude. Oh yeah. When you square it up with the Meta Power, it sounds and feels so satisfying. When you hear a barreled up ball on the meta or the meta power, you know exactly what bat mm -hmm. it is. You just get that drop five nostalgia. Yeah. Well, bonk. Yeah, it's, it's the closest sounding bat to a drop five. You're absolutely right. right. Uh, so, gotta have this as one of the best sounding bats. The other one is actually like an ugly sound. Mm -hmm. It's a really ugly sound, but so ugly and so unique that I really like it. <laughs> and I think the fact that it's a really, really good bat and I mash with it really helps. The nuke! Nuke. The nuke sounds so weird. Uh -huh. And it sounds like you're breaking the ball every time <laughs> you hit it. But, dude, I freaking love it. I think, again, the fact that this thing mashes mm -hmm. really helps me like the sound. I just know that sound when you square it up with the nuke that the ball is going to go very far. Mm -hmm. um, I think this thing just sounds weird as hell, but you're really going to stand out on the field. Uh, that's why I have this as one of my best sounding bats of the year. Mm -hmm. All right, JT. I'll give you the honors. All right. The worst BB core bat you've ever hit with. Is that good? No. Is that good? Damn. Oh, you smoked that. Get all that one. Roll through the wall. The sweet spot was just like non-existent it, it was really hard to have good feel with this bat when i got jammed or hit it off the end it hurt my hands a lot i was gonna say that um and when i did hit it on the sweet spot it felt okay but it just didn't travel the mizuno squishy barrel no where is that thing i actually wow. bought a new one this is the 2019 Freshly never hit. You're gonna be the one to hit with this. <laughs> and it doesn't even hurt. <laughs> In budget bat madness, I got this thing for a hundred dollars. I think we really brought the price down on this one, unfortunately. <laughs> I feel bad, guys. I hate talking crap about bats, but luckily I think this one was discontinued. Uh-huh. So we're chilling. We we can like openly talk bad about it. If you guys didn't see the squishy barrel video, it was interesting. Go check it out. We put this up against the select power and bat madness. <laughs> I hit a home run with it. It went like 305. You, if you hit it, so here's the sweet spot, right? About that big? Yeah. If you hit it right there, you're... D broken if, hand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this thing hurts the hand so much. It's a two-piece alloy. Is it alloy? Yeah, it's an yeah. aluminum handle and an aluminum barrel wrapped in rubber? Something like it. Yeah. It's kind of light swinging. And if you get it on the centimeter sweet spot, the ball kind of goes far. But, dude, this hurts. It hurts to hit with. And sounds really weird and feels really weird. I just... I couldn't get behind the squishy barrel, bro. The worst bat... So, something's gotta take it, you know? There, there ha, There's a worst bat. There has to be one. 
We're giving it to the Squishy Barrel. Maybe get this bat. It's only $100 on Just Bass website. Get it just to experience what yes. we're talking about. Experience the Squishy Barrel. It's entertaining, bro. Maybe <laughs> if you hit like a rubber baseball with it. Like a What if it just goes like 500 feet? I mean, maybe this is like made for Japanese baseballs. Maybe they got that like rubber coating on them. And they like cut the ball when they swing. Uh-huh. So maybe it works well for them. American baseballs for our uppercut swings. Bleh. Yeah. Sucks. <laughs> Alright, guys. There you have it. The Bat Bro 2020 annual award show. The Broskies informally. We'll think of a better name for next year. Y'all are the best. Thanks for an amazing year. You can check out our Bat Bro scale over at baseballbatbros.com. You can also cop the merch. We'll probably get embroidered suit jackets eventually. John's wearing my wedding jacket. <laughs> so guys, thanks for hanging out. Fun video. We'll see you next time. Peace out. Peace. Excellent. Money, dude. Thank you.